it is time to start doing the maintenance needed for our next track day at Watkins Glen in October. So it's gonna be the first time that I'm taking any other car besides the Type R on the track. So it's gonna be a whole different experience. All wheel drive, much older, doesn't have the auto rev match. It's a five speed instead of a six speed and different type of power. So first things first, we gotta figure out the exhaust leak. It's coming out of the exhaust manifold, I'm pretty sure. And maybe it's the O2 harness. With like a, I forget what it's called, but it's like the turbine outlet or O2 collector. But this one has a Megan collector, as you can see right there. And it goes down. It's about like a five inch long piece that goes down to that looks like a three bolt. And that's probably the front pipe or the down pipe, whatever it's called but it's leaking from somewhere because when we first got the car, I could smell the exhaust fumes. I could hear it coming from this area. And the other things that we have to do to this, fluids. So the brake fluid definitely, definitely needs to be changed. So here is the brake master cylinder, the reservoir. And just like the Type R, it shares the reservoir for the clutch master cylinder. So makes it easier for us to change out. So you can see in there how dirty that brake fluid is. That is, looks like from here, basically pitch black. This is the only track brake fluid that I am running now, Castrol SRF. Get this from FCP Euro. It's about $94 per bottle. Very expensive, but because you buy from FCP Euro, all you gotta do is send back your old fluid after you purchase the original one obviously and then you make a second order you send back the old fluid in the container and you get store credit so it's lifetime free replacement and we got some oil this is the same oil that we run in the type bar this is motul 5w30 300v this is good for motorsports is a really expensive bottle this is like 40 dollars per bottle so that's about $20 per liter. So we're talking like over $100 per oil change. But because FCP Euro, you only pay it once. So other things that I noticed on this car, uh, it's got new brakes, but these brakes, at least the pads, I don't think are rated for the track. Obviously hard to see the pads in here right now, but RPF ones, really good condition. RE71 tires. These are from 2017, but no dry rotting, no cracking that I can see. I'll have to take a closer visual inspection of the tread and also the inside and make sure that they're track worthy. The rotors on here are brand new. They look like StopTech blanks with the coated top hats. So those will be fine for the track. We're gonna bleed the fluids. This is the same Brembo's that are on the Type R. So a lot of the car parts on this, at least the brakes and the fluids, share the same exact stuff. Tire inflator slash digital gauge comes in handy for all my track days. So tires, front and rear, were really low actually. The fronts and the rears were at like 23 PSI cold. The rears I pumped to 28. The fronts I did 32. That's what I read on the forums is a uh, good balance for cold tire pressure to run. Took the heat shield off and without even starting the car, I know why there's an exhaust leak. Top of this flange right there, there's no bolt here. There's supposed to be a bolt there. And you can clearly see where the gasket has completely blown out. I don't know how that one's gonna come out. I might need to put this thing on the lift. All right, let's go for our first cold start in three days. Start it right up. Let's see where that exhaust leak's coming from. I can hear it right there. 100%. Cosworth cams. One other thing I love about this Evo, it's so proportionally good in size. Like, it's so much more narrow than the Type R that when you're sitting in it, it feels like I was in the R32, but there's so much headroom on the inside of this car. This car feels really good, perfectly sized. The car weighs probably just around 3,080 pounds. This one does have the AC, so it does add a little bit of weight compared to the base base RS model, which I think 
is right around 3,000. Looking over the paperwork, so this car made just about 340 wheel horsepower, 340 wheel torque, really nice curve. This is important, the wheel alignment spec. So camber, we're at negative three, four, negative three, one. So that's about what we need for the track. You wanna have more negative camber in the front on an all wheel drive car and front wheel drive cars. The toe is zeroed out, which is fine for me for tire life. The rear camber, negative 1.9, which is also good for the track. And then toe is also zeroed out. So wheel alignment is great. Some other good stuff, parts, more parts. This was the trans rebuild receipt, Apexi N1 EXV coilovers. And the defy gauges and then i got all the spare parts in here you know the radio um hvac boost gauge trim all the defy gauges you know these defy gauges go for big money so i can probably get back like close to a thousand dollars for all these gauges the wideband gauge that i might want to put back in so the reason why they took all these gauges out i think was to give it more of an oem look but if we're gonna track this car, it might be worth putting this stuff back into. And we even got the original warranty and owner's manual packet. Shout out to Nick for dropping off these spare G-Lock pads off his Type R. He only used the pads, I think, once. So, free pads. These are normally like 400 bucks. So we're gonna throw these on there. Only the fronts can go on here. All right, just got the new G-Lock pads in there. These are the R10 orange compound. So the same ones I have on the Type R. These were the original pads in there. Still had a ton of life left, so we can always swap them back out for the street in the winter. The All-Star Performance Brake Bleeder. This thing is awesome. Lifesaver, saves so much time. There is a check valve built into this system and it's magnetic so it sticks right to your rotor. That way it's a one person bleed. You can just go in there, you crack the bleed valve loose, you pump it like 10 times until you start seeing clear new fluid coming in. Good amount of dirty fluid came out and all the new fluid in there, it's all clear. Yesterday we were working on draining the brake fluid and flushing out the lines. Then I realized I got to the front after I was doing the pads, we still had the rubber lines in there. So I next day aired some StopTech stainless steel braided brake lines for the front. I also ordered new ARP bolts for the O2 collector. So the next thing we're gonna do is oil change and finish out the brake lines. And I think that's really it. So we're underneath the car and guys, look at this. I've never seen a drain bolt look like this before. It's got some sort of sensor in it. I'm not sure what it's for, possibly oil temp, but there's a sensor that looks kind of factory that just goes all the way up into here. Pretty dirty oil, as you can see. Got some nice ARP bolts that will go from the O2 collector to the turbo. Get rid of that old junk hardware, get some nice ARP 12 points. And we got some nice StopTech stainless steel braided brake line. This is the front kit because if we're gonna be taking this on the track, we don't wanna have these rubber lines in here because they expand under high heat and pressure and we're running one of the best brake fluids you can buy passenger side brake line is completely in pretty straightforward no issues stop tech head is nice because it comes with all new hardware new bolt new copper washers this is the color of the old brake fluid coming out of the clutch master this is disgusting. All right, well, first time working on an Evo engine, and I gotta say, it's not that fun 
to get that pipe off. Apparently, some of the bolts in there were like stripped and they weren't coming out. So there's only one way to get it out is to take the whole turbo out. Uh, so that's what we did. Two hours later, here we are. Turbo manifold, that actually comes off really easily. All the bolts are pretty accessible once you get the turbo off. The turbo is held in by four bolts. Those came out really easily. Getting the turbo out was not that easy just because of how much stuff is attached to the turbo. You have to take a lot of things off. There's oil feed lines, there's coolant feed and return lines. There's the oil drain line. So like we had to drain some of the oil, we had to drain some coolant. It's getting messy in there. But now we have full access to this O2 collector pipe so we can remove all the bolts, put in the new gasket and do it right. And maybe while it's out, we'll do some paint on it. We can paint the turbo, we can paint the turbine, make it look nice again. Should we do a big single turbo now while we're at it? Just kidding. Got to take all these bolts off. That one was seized and stripped so that one really needed an impact gun to come out that's why the turbo had to come out of the car got that o2 housing off this is the shot gasket this is definitely the gasket that came with the megan part no wonder it blew look at that split right down the middle we got a nice new thick steel ma performance one so we got a bunch of stuff from stm all new OEM gaskets, got some uh, OEM trunk logo, we got exhaust donut gaskets, exhaust bolts with the springs, we got a new head to manifold gasket in here, oil drain gaskets, turbo gaskets, all the good stuff. So that way we can ensure that there's no leaks anywhere else in the system. Big update, we've got everything back together. The turbo manifold is on, the turbo is on, all the oil and coolant fittings are back on. Last thing to do is just to bolt up the exhaust. So we have all new hardware and gaskets here. This car did not have any of this before. It did have the donut gasket, but that one's getting kind of old. So we just bought a new one. These spring bolts are actually really expensive. I think they were 60 bucks for the both of these. These are necessary because the spring bolt and the donut gasket and all that actually helps reduce vibration by increasing the amount of flex from the exhaust to the engine. The last thing I wanna do before we put this car together is to do a compression test, all four cylinders, and then replace the spark plugs that were in there. You can see one, two, three, four. Spark plugs are looking like they had much better days. Cylinder one. Cylinder two. Cylinder three. Cylinder four. So much quieter now. cover bolts the uh, spark plug galley I got to do that real quick yeah car seems to run really nicely all right first drive still flashing a little service light one time I know the clearance for the exhaust to the oil pan is very very tight still so I'm not sure but it's definitely flashing less we shall see after some more driving all right so we got some parts for the Evo, it's still breaking up. I think it's something to do with the ignition if it's not the valve, intake valve being sticky. So 
brand new coil packs just went with the duralast ones because if these are no good i can just bring them back uh, instead of buying like oem ones got some ngk blue wires brand new so these are like 120 and those were uh 30 dollars give or take so let's throw these in go for a test drive after see if it solves our ignition problem if not then poor car is gonna probably have to take the head off and uh do the intake valves all right new plugs wires coil packs let's see how it does all right iphone 15 pro we're trying the selfie cam 4k video i think the microphone is actually a lot better too on the front camera so let's see if it still misfires if it does then i think we're gonna have to pull the head off get the valves checked make sure you know i think i have, think there's a sticky cylinder one intake valve because when I did the leak down test, it was showing 11% and I can hear, I can hear the air coming out of the turbo through the intake. So it's probably a loose intake valve, sorry, a sticky intake valve. And uh, we're gonna have to pull the head off, you know, clean up the head, do the valves, valve guys, things like that. So essentially we'll have, it's already got cams, so I'm not sure why we gotta take the head off again. Like, this is not a completely stock head, unfortunately. Um, let's see how it does. The engine's already warmed up, so if we do a pull and we see the check engine light flash and we hear the brake up again, then we know that the new plugs, wires, and coil packs did not resolve the issue. But these RE71Rs, are really good in the rain like this thing feels like a four by four going through this uh flood right now it's really bad weather it's like people's houses and cars underwater uh let's try it. still breaking up still breaking up so unfortunately that did not help it actually feels a lot better now that we did that not breaking up as much but the service light is still flashing a little bit